Chairman, you're live. Good morning and welcome to this meeting of the Education Libraries and Lifelong Learning Cabinet Panel. It's Thursday, the 2nd of September 2021, and you are all very welcome. Before I start the meeting, formally, I have to read the following announcement. With regard to COVID-19 attendance at this meeting. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, the Council will be holding this meeting electronically. Members of the public may also attend this meeting in an electronic capacity, and there is a link on the Council's website for them to do so. Members of the Council are asked to keep their microphones switched off until called to speak and to switch their microphones off once they have finished speaking. Cameras may be left on throughout the meeting if the members wish. If you experience connection or other technical issues, it may help to switch your camera off. Cameras should be switched on if and when speaking at the meeting. To indicate a wish to speak, members should use the raised hand function. Use of the meeting chat function is exclusively for voting. At the end of the debate on each item of business, there will be a vote. Members should vote using the meeting chat function by indicating for, against or abstain. And I will declare the result after each vote. If we are extending beyond two hours, uh, there will be a 15 minute break at the end of the two hour slot. And that will be taken after a speaker in the debate has finished speaking. If we are voting, the vote will be concluded before the break is taken. Other breaks will be incorporated as appropriate. Now, for this meeting, there is one membership change. Uh, Councillor Rena Ranger is substituting for Caroline Clapper for this meeting only. I'm now going to go around the, uh, the screen and ask each member just simply to introduce themselves, say which party they represent and also which division they represent. So, uh, Christopher Alley. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, my name is Christopher Alley. I'm a Conservative member and I represent South, uh, South Box in Eastbury. Thank you. Judy. Good morning. I'm Judy Billing. I represent the Labour Group on Hertfordshire County Council and my division is Hitchin North, or it was last time I looked. <laughs> Good morning, Judy. Thank morning. you. Morning. Uh, Lawrence. Good morning, Chairman. My name is Lawrence Brass. I'm the Liberal Democrat member for Bushy North. Thank you. Fiona. Good morning. I'm Fiona Hill, Conservative member for Royston Eastern Ermine and Vice Chairman of this committee. Paula. Good morning. I'm Councillor Paula Hiscox, um, Conservative member representing Rittensworth West. Thank you. Uh, is Chris Lloyd with us yet? I don't think he is. OK, um, Jan Madden. Good morning, uh, Jan Madden, independent, and I'm Hemel Hempstead South East. Thank you. Mark Mills Bishop. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, Mark Mills Bishop, uh, Conservative member of Hampstead End and Turnford. Michael. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Michael Muir, uh, Conservative, and I represent uh, the whole of Baldock and a little bit of Letchworth. Thank you. Rena. Uh, good morning. My name is Councillor Rena Ranger, and I'm the Conservative member for Rickmansworth East and Oxy Park. And I'm the substitute today. Thank you. Yep. And Mark Watkin. <laughs> Very confusing having two marks. Uh, good morning, my name is Mark Watkin. I am the Lib Dem uh, opposition spokesperson, therefore, for education, libraries and localism. And uh, my division is Nascot, which is in Watford. Nascot Park, I beg your pardon, which is in Watford. Don't forget the park in Nascot. No, Thank you, Mark. Uh, and I am Councillor Terry Duris. I'm Conservative and my division is Bridgewater. So thank you all very much indeed. Can I draw your attention, please, that if any members have any disclosable pecuniary interests, 
or declarable interest to um, let to announce those as at the beginning of the item. Um, I'm now going to invite you at item one to uh, agree the minutes of the part one minutes of the Education Libraries and Lifelong Learning panel held on the 16th of July 2021. Um, can I ask you in uh, chat to say for, against or abstain, please? Thank you, and that has they have been agreed. Um, I think that we've actually got Chris Lloyd on the line. Um, so, Chris, if you are there, do you want to just introduce yourself, say which party you represent and which uh, division you are? I saw his name come up on the chat. No. Don't think we're Chairman, I can report that his internet has just gone down. It's very flaky, so uh, I suspect we'll just have to go on and hope that Chris will intercede. I think officially he ought to give his, he ought to be regarded as giving his apologies because he's trying very hard. But uh, technology outside, I think the co the council's control is defeating him. So can he be recorded as officially giving his apologies for the sake of the? Um, uh, if, if I may, Mark, what I would suggest, um, as long as um, our Democratic Services colleagues are happy, let's not show him as the apologies at this moment in time, because if he is able to join the meeting for the majority of it, then that would be good. No, I guess uh, that's fair. If, if, if at the end of the meeting he hasn't been able to the, join. It's not that he's forgotten, rest assured. Absolutely he's, not. So, so, <laughs> Thank no, you, Chairman. I totally agree. OK, right. Now we come to the... Um, item two, uh, public petitions. Um, now, the way that public petitions work is that there is a, an absolute fixed period of time of 20 minutes for the whole of this item. Um, the petitioner will have up to three minutes to present his petition, following which the, what I will then do at the end of his petition I will stop the clock um, just for a moment or two, and then we will go into the debate for the remainder of the 20 minutes. And there is no extension to the 20 minutes and it will be, and that's it. So um, I don't know if we have got Lee Burgess, who is the Vice Chair of Governors at Hexton JMI with us yet. Um, can I'm here. You are. Fine. Um, Elaine, are you are you set with your your timer? I am chairman. Thank you. Lee, did you hear my comment about the timing for that? Are you aware of that? Yes. OK, um, are you are you ready to go? Uh, yes. OK, so do you want me, you want me to turn my camera on? on? Sorry, Will I turn my camera on, camera on. Uh, it, yes, if, if that's. Yeah, please do. Please do. OK, there you are. We can see you. Right. OK. Um, as they say, off you go. OK, hello. Um, I wish to present two areas today. The process today and our case to save our school. Firstly, the process. Eleven months ago, the chair and I were invited to a meeting at Hearts County Council. No prior agenda was given. The meeting was to advise of a proposal to close our school. and There had been no prior warning of this. HCC advised us later that it was highly unlikely that they would change their mind on this matter. After the first meeting, the chair and I prepared a 27 page proposal which outlined a challenging but viable plan, which we sent to HCC. Six months later, we were offered a 30 minute slot to discuss our proposal, a totally inadequate amount of time for such an important meeting. At this meeting, HCC advised they had not read our document beforehand, so most of the meeting was taking up presenting it. Following this, 
HCC talked about the director's four tests which they had conducted. We had no visibility of this document beforehand, despite being told it had been shared, which HCC later confirmed. We received it some two months later, seven months after the initial meeting. We were told there was a moratorium on communications due to local elections. Since this day, HCC have pressed ahead with speed, but with no real consideration given to our proposal or any alternatives. Lip service has been paid to any discussions about the future of the school. In the 11 months that have passed, we have only had 240 minutes of discussions on a proposal to close a 175 year old school. At no time has any support been given to the school. It feels like everything is being engineered to produce an outcome to meet an agenda to consolidate schools across Hertfordshire. Now to our case. HCC's argument is based around two key points, the projected pupil numbers for the catchment area and the impact of a two class structure on teaching and learning outcomes. It's important to note that prior to October last year, no concerns have been raised about the school budget or the quality of teaching. In fact, the governing body had sought advice on budget concerns and had been offered financial support by HCC. And the recent Ofsted report stated that the quality of teaching, learning and assessment was good. Personal development, behaviour and welfare were outstanding and outcomes for pupils were good. It went on to state that the move from three to two classes combined with staff changes affected parents' confidence. However, the speed at which school leaders have turned the situation around is impressive. Our position, we're a small village school on the border with hearts and beds. It's not possible to achieve numbers just from catchment area alone. And as such, we have seen fluctuations in numbers year on year for decades. Despite this, we've always been able to attract enough pupils to be viable. We do not see this changing. Prior to the pandemic, we managed a 60% increase in pupil numbers through word of mouth and advertising, showing there is a demand for our school. We recognise there are challenges with temporarily teaching the age groups across two classes, but we have a good team in the staff and the governing body. Parents love bringing their children to the school. It offers something different to larger village and town schools. The local community wants the school to prosper, but most importantly, the children love this school. History tells us that we can and we will get back to a sustainable level. We just need to be given the time and support to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and thank you for keeping within the time. Uh, it will stop the clock. Uh, just to remind everybody, if I may, that um, the the discussion on the uh, on the 16th of July was on the basis of the consultation and moving forward with a consultation. So having said that, thank you very much, Lee, for that. Um, I'm now going to open it to the floor. Um, I will ask you all please to make your contributions very short um, and succinct uh, because I'm sure a number of people will want to uh, contribute. And I also know that the local member is here. So um, Elaine, when we get towards the last two or three minutes, um, if you can just give me a note, nod and I will invite David Barnard to uh, make any comment. I so, will do, Chairman. Thank you. So if we start the clock and Judy, you have indicated, please. Thank you, Chair. It would actually be very helpful for me if we were to hear the views of the local member early in this debate, because because I'm actually not sure what David's view is. And it would be really helpful for me to know um, in terms of what I would like to propose. And what I would like to propose is that this school be given all the time it possibly can be given to have its case looked at properly um, and not just a, a hasty decision to close it. I know there are economic difficulties with small village schools. There have been um, since my husband was a county councillor here back in the 1980s. This debate raged then. Uh, but these are real people. There are our children. They are people we need to be careful about. And so please can we hear from the local member now and please can we do absolutely everything we can to help this school, the governors, the parents and the children to reach the best outcome for them, not just for the county council in general. Thank you very much. I am very happy to accede to that uh, request, Judy. If David Barnard would like to speak now, I'm more than happy to uh, invite him in. And you're muted, David. I'm trying you're to get still muted. Can you hear yeah. me now? Yes. OK. okay. Um, well, yes. Thank you, Judy. Uh, I, I absolutely agree with uh, the comments that you made. Um, I should declare that uh, both of my children, um, one of whom is a district councillor now, um, uh, attended Hexton School. Um, I am a previous governor. Um, 
from many, many years ago. So that's that's my interest, and obviously as the local member. Um, the, 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 the largest problem that we seem to be having at the moment um, is the fact that uh, Bedfordshire have declared that they are going to um, uh, go from their current three-tier system down to a two-tier system um, to, to, to match Hertfordshire. Now, uh, Hexton is right up against the uh, the county boundary, and Barton is a large uh, uh, village, almost a town, which is which is adjacent to it. Now, we know that Bedfordshire are progressively already um, changing their system, but it hasn't yet got as far as Barton. And, I, and I've been trying to um, find out what their program is and how how. Um, far in the future their um, proposals are to go to a two-tier system in uh, Barton and area. Um, I know of a number of children who are in Barton, um, including, in fact, uh, four that my uh, eldest daughters managed to produce, bless her, um, who would love to go to Hexton School. Uh, but of course, what happens, of course, they get to about the, 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 the age of eight, um, and then they have to go back into uh, Bedfordshire for the three-tier system. Um, yeah, it's very unfortunate. Uh, we've got to note, I mean, going back all of the years, um, there, there were only about 60 children at the school um, when my children, who are now 32 and 34, um, were at that school. Um, it was run very, very successfully. And it continues to be run very successfully and very professionally. The um, the headmistress at, at the time that my children were born, you had to put your name down at the time that they were born in order to get to the school at the age of five. Um, I would love to see uh, a, a stay of execution, if, if that's the right terminology. I know it's only going to go to public consultation at this stage, um, and that if anything were to happen, it wouldn't be happening until uh, the end of this school year. But uh, I have absolute trust in the governors and the, uh, a very, very active parents committee. And uh, and I believe that they will be able to produce um, the goods and the results that we want. Um, and again, uh, I would uh, plead with you to perhaps um, give, give them a little bit of time to actually produce the goods. Um, uh, there's not much else I can say. I'm I'm so passionate about this, uh, and I know that uh, the locals are, and I know that a lot of people from out of town would love to come to that school. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, just a reminder, if you can keep the comments as succinct as possible. Mark Watkin. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and uh, thank you, David. Uh, you absolutely encapsulated some of the things I suspected and was going to say uh, in theory, and you've just actually spelt it out very clearly. Um, to my mind, a good school needs a good head, an absolutely committed uh, governing body, and the support of its community. Um, and what does this school have? A good head, a good committed governing body, and the support of its community. And the evidence of the support of its community absolutely comes through loud and clear in the petition that we're discussing today. Um, you don't, you don't sacrifice this. Uh, without fundamentally being certain that what you're doing is right, because the people who will be disrupted most will be these children. And if they're happy and they're content and the school is flourishing, why should we force them to have to travel to another school and, and, and basically uh, have their education damaged? Sometimes we, we agreed another school should close, and I think that was, you know, that seemed to be perfectly sensible. I'm absolutely sure by the commitment shown to me by uh, the people I've been in touch with at the school that this is a school that has every opportunity to grow and flourish. And from what David said about happening in Bedfordshire, it sounds to me the opportunities for it are even are, are going to be better in the future when the two tier system comes in. So I support absolutely uh, the request that this should not be progressed to consultation. Um, and that's exactly what my group will be voting for. Thank you. Uh, for what it's worth, I can confirm, having spoken to uh, Central Bedfordshire Council, that they have no plans in the immediate future in that area to go to a two-tier system. Um, do we have anybody else? Bear in mind, please, if I may, that we are to, that the um, that the decision to go to a consultation um, will be made at the cabinet panel or at the cabinet. Um, later on this month, and that is um, one of the options um, 
uh, prin the principal option actually from the petition to refer the matter to cabinet, which is what it will be. And of course, at the end of all of this, we, if the if the consultation does go ahead, then it, there will be an outcome from the consultation. And and a lot of these comments that have been made by Councillor Barnard, by Councillor Watkin, etc., and Councillor Billing will be incorporated. I'm quite sure in those um, in those responses to a consultation. Uh, uh, Chris Lloyd. Thank you, Chairman. S sorry, I've had um, pro problems with connectivity, so hopefully I can contribute. I've listened to the different points. What I think would be useful, probably in light of COVID, in light of listening to the local member and the petition, is possibly that we recommend that any consultation on closure is delayed a year to enable the school, hopefully outside of any further COVID restrictions to explore the options so that we would need to discuss it again. We can tell them that it's it's still a likely option, but I think because of COVID, it's been very, very tough for them to drum up extra numbers. Uh, and that would be what I would like to propose as a modification. So we don't go to consultation this year. We indicate that we might well have to next year, but we give them that further year to try and show us that, uh, you know, it is sustainable. I obviously understand from David that his children benefited and he'd like his grandchildren to go there as well, which is something I would want to do. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, bear in mind, of course, that the decision to go to a consultation or not go to a consultation would be a decision for Cabinet. And that is why um, it's been referred to the Cabinet panel. Um, or to the cabinet, I should say. I apologise. Um, does anybody else have any other comments? We don't have an option within the uh, remit of the petition scheme and the debate to change the de to delay um, the consultation. Um, that, if that were to come to pass, that would be a decision taken at the cabinet. Does anybody else have any other comments? Mark Watkin. Yeah, but I just, I just think, pardon me, I clear my, my throat. Um, just for clarification, then, um, can we be assured that the sentiments expressed by both the petitioner and by all the speakers to date will be accurately reported to cabinet, so that there's an understanding um, that this is the sentiment of this panel, if it is. Um, and I don't know whether there's scope for a vote to be held. That's something within your control. But I think there's a, I think there's a feeling. I, can, I mean, I'm looking at people's faces, really, uh, which is the trouble about not being in a room. Um, that that there is a strong support for this really committed group of people to keep their school going, and 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 we shouldn't. As everyone says, if you go to consultation. Um, it's sort of the flag is flying, you know, it's it's very hard once you've got to that level to turn it back, whatever, whatever technically could be the case. Um, the answer to the, your first part of that comment, Mark, is yes, I will make sure that um, the 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 essence, the absolute essence of the discussion and the contributions made today are reflected um, when it comes to be discussed at Cabinet. Jan Madden. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, I would just like to echo what everybody else said, and um, I'm glad that Mark um, asked that these uh, comments were put forward to Cabinet because I feel very strongly um, in the same way that the others do. Just wanted that recorded. Thanks. Yeah, um, for, for what it's worth, they, they automatically would get referred um, and included in the representation or the statement to uh, cabinet. Uh, Chris Alley. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, no, I, I agree with some of the statements um, and sentiment that, that has been expressed. I think nobody here wants to close a school. Nobody wants to. Um, it's a very hard decision to make. But that isn't the question we're being asked. We, we, we're not proposing that. What we're proposing is for the formal consultation to be sent to cabinet for for a discussion there and for it to be proposed there. You know, the decision 
whatever happens, the assessment of, of the school's position and the future, it's only right that, that all stakeholders with all of their um, positions and, and their opinions should be heard in a formal process. Otherwise, you know, we would never get anything done. And I think it's only right that both the local uh, residents, the parents, the governors, the local member and everybody, not just those that signed a petition or, or have the, who are able to be here, have their say and have their opinion. Now, you know, I, I have full sympathy with the petition and, and with local residents. And, you know, I, I, you know I, I, it is a hard one, but I do believe it's the right. We need to stay with procedure. And I think it's only right that, that we continue down this path. And, and I think if we if something if the petition if the consultation is um is done pro you're probably as i'm sure it will be you know the the right decision will, will will come from that um to presume that every consultation will result in a negative outcome well then you'll then you'll put into, into question the whole process of which how we make decisions so i i think it's only right that we um continue what we voted on last time and put forward the the consultation to cabinet Okay, thank you. Uh, Judy Billing, you want to come back? That's kind of you to let me, thank you. Um, until um, that last speaker, um, I was going to point out that we had um, pretty much cross party, including all four parties, uh, support to make it clear to Cabinet um, that, that we're not happy to proceed at this point. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that, that the cross party nature of this debate was also transmitted as strongly as possible to cabinet. I think what we're asking is not that this consultation never takes place. Um, and we most of us do do understand, excuse me. Most of us do understand the value of proper consultation and don't need to be told that. I think the point is that at this moment in the education cycle with what schools have been through over the last 18 months is really not a good starting point and not a good benchmark for saying to the public what should happen to this school in the future. That's why some of us are saying ask Cabinet to leave it for a while until schools are back in some sort of equilibrium um, and can start to do interesting work like marketing as well as teaching and learning um, and, and I think there was a very strong view in favour of asking for that delay. And I just hope that that's the message that you will transmit to uh, Cabinet when you have the joyful experience of talking to them about it. Thank you, Judy. Uh, did I see anybody else's hand? I don't think I did. Mark Mills Bishop, if you can use the hand function, but go on. Yeah, um, no, I did use the hand function. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, but uh, um, I'm not going to add too much to it uh, other than I think uh, uh, I should declare I am a governor at a school and my wife and son are primary school teachers. Um, I just wanted to be put on record the uh, thanks for Mr. Burgess for such a very clear and cogent uh, petition that he presented today. And uh, I have listened very carefully to that. Um, I shall be attending cabinet and I have uh, made notes of everything that people have said today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mark. And of course, yes, thank you very much indeed, um, Mr. Burgess for uh, making that, uh, presenting that petition. I think we are almost out of time. The um, the recommendation that I will put is that we refer the matter to Cabinet, which is the same as the recommendation indeed um, going forward, or it would be have to be discussed anyway following um, the panel meeting. So it will be discussed at Cabinet. And, and, and there will be a, a note and a record of, of uh, um, that I need to ask you, please, to vote that um, you agree that it is referred to cabinet. So for, against, or abstain, please.
we have a majority um, in agreement with that that recommendation. Thank you all very much indeed. And once again, thank you very much indeed, Mr Burgess. Um, and I appreciate everything that you've said and uh, I'm very grateful to you for coming along this morning as well. Thank you. Right, we move now, please, to the next item. Thank, which you, is thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, we move now to item three, the Hertfordshire School Improvement Strategy, and that is going to be presented by, I think, Simon Newland or Juliet Whitehead. So are they with us? Simon, good morning to you. Yes. <coughs> yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just say a few words of uh, introduction <coughs> and then if there are any particular questions that members have, um, it may well be that Juliet as well as myself can uh, answer them. Um, I mean, you'll see um, that the document is, is not an action plan, um, and nor is it a COVID recovery plan. But what it is, is, is a, uh, essentially a partnership document um, and a strategy which sets out the roles and relationships of all the different actors in the local education system. Um, and having a document of that sort, I think, is increasingly important um, in the education world that we're, we're now in, because the success or failure of um, education for the totality of the children of Hertfordshire um, depends on the way in which a whole load of different um, important participants work together. And of course, the County Council has a significant leadership role in that. Um, but working with um, multi-academy trusts, the regional schools commissioner, uh, the diocese, um, individual academies, school associations, and a whole host of other very important partners. So this document is, is uh, in intent something which draws together the contributions of all those different entities um, and sets out the kind of collective vision and collective aspiration that I think we all have. Um, and that uh, vision or aspiration is not very different to that which we've had in Hertfordshire for many years, but it's got two components which which sit in sit sit which I think are complementary. Um, and the first one is to make sure that the quality of education for everybody is as good as it possibly can be. Um, <clears throat> that all children have the opportunity to attend a good school. So that's to kind of continue the success that we and our schools have had in the past for everybody, regardless of their ability or uh, a background. And the second, the second element of it is to seek to give perhaps particular attention to more disadvantaged young people, um, where we know that we've been somewhat less successful than we have uh, in the past for their more advantaged peers. So those are the two kind of arms of uh, our strategy. But I don't think they're intention. I think they're, they're complementary and that what we're trying to achieve in terms of good schools uh, will be good both for uh, what you might call the advantaged and for the disadvantaged. So, so that's a, a kind of general um, background to the document. Um, and it's been drawn up, um, co-produced, you might say, um, with uh, a whole range of our educational partners within the county. Simon, um, let me just kick off, if I may, and ask you, um, and I, I, I've read the, the, the improvement strategy. Um, I've, I've actually print, printed it off because sometimes it's easier to, to read and that's not going to work with the background there. Um, is this the first time that we've actually produced, if you like, a comprehensive or, or a coordinated, no, not coordinated, a comprehensive strategy in a document like this? Because I get the feeling that we've brought, brought together a number of different strands in a codified way. Um, we have produced a school improve, something called a school improvement strategy in the past. Uh, I think that was four or five years ago. Um, but the the kind of nature of it has changed over time because of the different circumstances that the education system's facing. Um, 
so it's it's the first time we've done anything quite like this but there have been other precursor documents um and i think members will all be aware of the other sets of plans which sit alongside this um i mean most recently you will have looked at the special places strategy um, and before that at uh, the SCND strategy. So this is not the only educational strategy, but it's the one which deals most particularly with school improvement. I think the other thing as well is that it's a document not for just being put on a shelf and left. It's something, it's a living, breathing document that will um, change to some extent as time goes on, although it's got a lifespan of um, five years to 2026. It is a really positive document. And also, if I may, just draw colleagues' attention to the section at the back of it, um, where it actually gives a very good graphical um, indication of, of the different levels of Ofsted examination or inspection um, challenges and what a school has to do to be outstanding. Or, and at the other end, what a school um, may fall over about in terms of going into uh, special measures or requires improvement. I will stop there. Um, and I, I thought I saw people. Judy, yeah, I see your your hand up. Thank you, Chair. I think Mark actually technically was before me, um, but I'm I'm happy to raise the points now. I'm dealing with a number of screens, so I do need to just very quickly go to my um, school improvement strategy document because I didn't print it out because I'm trying to be a better person than that. Um, so here it is on my screen. The first thing I wanted to ask about was um, item eight, the conditions. Um, and the third one, which says strong engagement from the majority of schools and academies. And that seemed to me to be a bit of a an unambitious line um, because does that mean that that we need 51 percent of engagement from um, schools and academies um, or are we aiming for something better than that so I, I was concerned about that um, items 28 29 if I can find them our role and accountability good grief I can't count the number of times I've sat in this panel over the last five or so years saying um, actually they may not all be our schools but they are all our children and it's really nice to see that recognised here except that that whenever I raise an issue to do with education in our secondary schools in particular um, I am told that we have no jurisdiction because of the academy status and yet here it looks a little bit like an elephant in the room that's not much being referred to in our own ambitions. And the third point I just very quickly want to make is I still have huge misgivings about the send element of what we do in schools and with education, having been moved over to children's services. I think we miss a great deal of, a great number, sorry, my own grammar's not doing well this morning, a great number of tricks. But by having made that separation, and I would yet again, I've asked before, ask for reconsideration of the send element of our work with children to come back into um, the education portfolio. So that's three things. OK, thank you very much indeed, um, Judy. Uh, did Mark Watkin. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman, and uh, I'm sorry to hear that Judy's grammar is not doing very well today. I hope she gets well soon. Um, just, yes, seriously, though, on this document, um, I think Judy sort of encapsulated the fundamental challenge which we have, which is, regrettably, I feel, we don't have the sort of control over the education environment in our local envir local authority that we used to have. And we do have to sort of make a bit of a silk purse out of a sow's ear by trying to get everybody of these different uh, groups, the mats, uh, the voluntary aided schools and our own schools to try and sing and, and work together. Um, that having been said, I, I absolutely sign up to the aspirations of this agreement, of this uh, of this document, um, and I've ordered, uh, I forget the lady's name now, but lady from D uh, uh, HFL's book on the nine pillars or nine pillars. I think it looks a very interesting document to have to hand. So um, 
I think that, that underpinning it, there's a tremendous aspiration, which we absolutely support, and we should be proud of what our, our schools do. Um, I have, I think, really, a couple of issues, really, questions. Um, there's a lot made of the fact that this has been produced in participation and consultation with other parties, but I'm not at all clear what sort of how they're held to account. And from leading from that, if I wanted to ask a simple question, what difference will this actually make? And I know that sounds very leading, um, but you know it's a very highly aspirational document, but we already have high achieving schools. So, so if I was to look at this in three years' time and say that strategy has made a real difference, what would I look to see? Where would what would the picture be for Hertfordshire schools to show that this is really you know, rolled over and made a, and made a difference. So there's two things there. How can we hold the other parties, particularly the Regional Schools Commissioner, the MATS, um, to account? And secondly, what will be that measure of this has been a good document? Well done. I hope, it, I hope there will be clear evidence. Um, I, I know we've got Chris Lloyd and Paula who want to speak. Um, can you can we just hold those points, please, Mark? And I'll ask Simon to come back and address those in a moment, uh, because they may also be covered by uh, the next two contributors. So, Chris Lloyd. Yeah, thank you. I think I think we should start probably with a thank you to Simon and all the team who are involved in the document. Um, I would agree with uh, Judy's point. Uh, and I, based on what Mark said earlier, and apologise, I didn't mention it under the other item. I am a school governor and my wife does work in a Hertfordshire school two hours a week running a school library. So if that can be noted wherever it needs to be noted. But I think it's it's good to have the document. I'd like Simon to request that it goes out electronically because if we're trying to look at our carbon footprint under other aspects, I think we want it can be made more widely available to people in our schools if it's sent out electronically to all staff and governors or however the appropriate means. There may, there may be a need to do some training for governors to explain how this is different than what we've done in the past. Um, but the, the SEND issue and the secondary school issue that, Jay, that um, where they're not county schools, I think we will have to work in partnership and we will obviously support you, Simon, within our divisions to uh, make sure that it is a success within Hertfordshire. Thank, thank you, Terry. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Paula. Thank, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, really good document. Um, thank you, Simon. Um, really clear, the two main uh, issues promoting high standards and reducing the attainment gap of disadvantaged pupils. That is really good priorities. Um, I can see on the document where it says it's going to be tracked internally with heads and groups meeting, etc. But for our benefit, this is running till um, 2026. Will this come back to this committee with some tracking and to see how well it's being used in our schools and if it is uh, doing what it's supposed to do, which is the two main functions. So can we have some tracking for us on it, please? Thank you. OK, and Lawrence. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I plough through all 42 pages of this, uh, this document and I'm sure a lot of time an effort went into it, um, but I didn't find it very practical for various reasons. And <coughs> one a practical um, improvement that I wanted to ask if it's possible to even consider if we are talking about a school improvement strategy would be, can we, for example, um, extend the school day? Uh, three o'clock, everyone disappears. There, lots of children have got a lot of catching up to do because of COVID, and such a short day seems to me to be very disadvantageous. Is that something that it's in the county's powers to do? And could something like that not have been included in this strategy to increase the school day to say three thirty, quarter to four, four o'clock, any time to because we need catch up uh, and 
catch up is uh, so essential in this post COVID era. That was what I wanted to ask. Thank you. OK, um, Simon, there's a number of items there. I'll, I'll let you go first and then I may add something afterwards, but uh, carry on, Simon, if you would. Or Juliet, if you prefer. Well, I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll pitch on. Um, yes, the, the um, Judy raised the issue of engagements, levels of engagement with academies. Um, and um, I mean, our, our aim or our aspiration is to work closely in partnership with all schools, both maintained schools and academies right across the board um, in terms of both CND and their, their, their wider standards. But, but we know that our relationships with some schools are closer than others. Um, I mean, Hearts for Learning does have some interaction with every academy to some degree. Um, but our there and our involvement in standards does does vary. Um, I would say we have um, a pretty good relationship, a, a quite close relationship um, with 80 or 90 percent of our academies. Um, and it would be nice if that was 100 percent. The the evidence from other local authorities um, and indeed from ISOS, I think, was that uh, anything over anything over 75% um, of academies with a good level of engagement was good. So, you know, you're quite right, Judy, it would be great if it was all our academies, but we regrettably find that there are some that are less involved with us than others for various reasons. Um, and um, that, I think, makes the challenge that we have of um, seeking to improve standards for all our children in all of our schools more difficult. Um, and I think this, the strategy and our, our recognition is that we are interested and we are concerned with schools, with standards for pupils everywhere, but that our ability to influence that, um, certainly our ability to control it is, is, is very variable um, and our in influence is, is not uniformly strong. But that's a challenge, uh, something we want to carry on trying to address with Hearts for Learning and others, um, not something to, that we can just acquiesce in. Um, <clears throat> I think your comment in relation to uh, whether this um, panel should cover SEND or not, um, I think is not for me to comment on. Um, but I did want to assure you that at officer level, we have uh, mechanisms which um, mean that I do work very closely with my colleagues in ISL and elsewhere in the Children's Services Directorate. And I'm sure Terry could talk about how um, <clears throat> we make sure that the work and the thinking of the two panels is uh, complementary and that there are no things that fall down the gaps. Um, Mark uh, asked how we held, held to account the different partners in the system. Um, and there are a whole range of ways that we do that. Um, the regular meetings that we have with the Regional Schools Commissioner, um, the uh, work that we do with schools representatives in the associations, Primary Heads Forum, HASH, um, Special Schools Executive, uh, in particular the work that we do in um, Schools Forum, which is, a, which is a public body and it's attended um, uh, well, well, um, I think it's attended by a number of members of this panel, um, either regularly or from time to time. So there's a whole series of of ways in which we uh, challenge, support, and hold to account partners in the system. Um, and I mean, education, like many other local authority systems, inevitably does involve a load of a number of different partners. That's true of early years. It's true of the interrelationships between ourselves and the health service. So the most large scale and complex public services always involve multiple partners and education is no different. Um, I mean, Mark also says, well, how how will we know this has made a difference? Um, and I think it's very difficult to put your finger on. A particular document or a particular strategy and say it's necessarily uh, made a large individual difference. But we 
No, and we're resting on the research from ISTOS, which says that the characteristics of a successful school improvement system are the characteristics which are, li are listed down in the strategy. Um, and I believe that if we can succeed uh, in being successful in having a system which shows all those characteristics, then it's most likely that the whole education service will work better than would otherwise be the case. Um, and of course, in the days when there were um, comparable attainment data, both primary and secondary, then we were looking all the time at how we compared with other local authorities to make sure that there was evidence that Hertfordshire collectively was being successful. Um, uh, Chris raised the question of the dissemination of the document, and we will, of course, send it out electronically um, to all governors and flag it in the training and uh, briefing um, activities that we undertake with those governing bodies. Um, I think um, Paula then said, well, how will we uh, come back to committee with progress, if you like, against the strategy? Um, it's always been the case, well, it's been the case in the past that we've put in and we've prepared for this panel um, an annual report on standards, which is ultimately the measure of how well the system is working. Um, we didn't do that last year because of the impact of COVID, um, but that's something that I think we will want to do each year. And it seems to me right as part of that annual report on standards to talk about the success or success or otherwise of a range of different things that we've been doing, including the extent to which schools and others are buying into what's in that strategy. Um, and then Lawrence raised a number of or some specific issues. Uh, one of them being the length of the school day. Um, and that is, you, you may have seen in the national media, that's been a matter of discussion and contention about whether or not the school day or the school year should be extended to help children uh, recover from the impact of COVID. And opinions vary about whether or not um, extra weeks of schooling um, or an extension to the day are actually a good thing or a bad thing. You know, it's not it's not necessarily the case that more and more and more means better and better and better. Um, but in terms of things like uh, minor minor changes to the school day, um, then those are matters for the governing bodies of each school um, within the broad parameters set by government regulation, which state how many teaching sessions you have to have per year. And governing bodies do vary, they, they vary in terms of their start dates, start times in the mornings, their finishing in the afternoons, um, and exactly what they do in between. Um, so that's broadly a matter for governors. Um, but I suppose I'd also say that the learning experience shouldn't end at the end of the school day. Um, that many schools put on before and after school activities, and of course all of them provide um, homework or home learning material for their pupils. So the pupils are not learning only when they're in school, they should also be doing their homework. Um, so it's not just uh, nine till 3.15. Thank you very much indeed, Simon. I, I think um, going back to Paula's request, I think you, you've in, in fact covered that one. Um, and so the, the, the short answer um, there is to um, is to say yes it will come back on an annual basis um, and and uh, we will be able to discuss it and uh, I'm sure we'll build that into the program uh, for our panel meetings annually. Um, with regard to special educational needs and disabilities um, it, it, these are always extremely complex areas and um, the, uh, uh, the the folks at um, ISL Integrated Services for Learning uh, pick up the the element of this and that falls within the children's services remit which my colleague councillor Teresa Heritage has oversight on. I think the simplest way probably to describe it in a sense is that they commission and we deliver. Um, they commission the, the requirements within the school settings um, and we then deliver them and that but it, it is a collaborative um, piece of work in terms of the provision and that's why as Simon mentioned earlier on the um, the, the, the um, 
the document that came earlier on this year in terms of the specialist resource um, provision um, for schools, special schools. And of course, we are looking at uh, new special schools anyway. Um, and then I think the final thing for just to mention to Lawrence, um, if my memory serves me as my time as a governor, um, schools can't just change the um, school day hours um, um, without full and some significant consultation with parents um, if they want to alter the, 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 the start time and the finish time of schools. And of course, very often that's not as easily done as one might think, especially if you have um, uh, transport arrangements for schools um, with um, for young people who are living away from the where the school is actually based, particularly if you like thinking about the rural areas. Um, but but by the same token, a good number of schools operate enrichment facilities, which is what Simon was referring to. I think after school, there's after school clubs, um, whether they be sporting or or, or verbal or, or uh, debating, whatever, uh, lot, lots of events. And indeed, um, I, I know in the past, I don't know whether it still runs, um, Watford schools engaged in a, uh, a Watford schools debating uh, competition, which was always uh, one of the highlights of the year. I don't know if that's still continuing, but it, it, was, it was a very good thing. But that was an extra mural activity. Um, so I think that I'm not seeing any other hands. The, the recommendation is that uh, the panel is asked to note and comment upon the content of this report um, and to recommend to Cabinet that the strategy for improvement 2021 to 2026 is formally launched in September of this year. So if I could all ask you please to vote for, against or abstain. That's agreed unanimously. Thank you all very much indeed. Uh, we move now to item four, the North Hearts Education Support Centre. The proposal to consolidate the two um, units which currently exist onto one site. Um, as you know, there are two elements to this, and I know that uh, Tina uh, Bartwas is joining us and I think we'd like to speak at some stage and I'm very happy to bring you in in a moment, Tina. Um, you know much. that uh, the ESC operates from Hitchin in the town centre, I believe, and also in Letchworth. And there is an opportunity to uh, consolidate both of these into one unit, um, one new purpose built um, establishment in Letchworth. Um, in Briar, Briar Park Lane, Briar Patch Lane. Um, but I will stop there because I think that Simon is going to um, pick up with the, the detail of this proposal. So, Simon? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I mean, members may remember, may recall that, there's, that we have, uh, over a number of years, been bringing forward proposals to um, improve the accommodation of ESCs um, and recently to bring them together onto single sites. So uh, you'll probably recall from some while ago that we um, moved the park ESC from a split site into a new um, much better quality building in Southfields in uh, Hatfield. Um, before that we moved and improved the Stevenage ESC um, to its new position at uh, the former Collinswood site. Um, and, and we are aware that our ESCs have had 
um, relatively poor accommodation in recent years. So we're trying to improve that. This is an opportunity for North Hearts to, um, as uh, Terry says, improve the quality of its accommodation by moving it onto a single site and substantially rebuilding it. Uh, and that, I think, will provide operational efficiencies as well as a better environment for the pupils um, and uh, uh, hopefully greater opportunities. So we have, um, the council has provided in the IP the capital funding to do this. Um, however, um, our view is that before starting the process, although we're not obliged to do a statutory consultation for this, nonetheless, we should go through a consultative process. So this paper is uh, recommending to panel and through panel to cabinet um, that we consult on the move of the ESC to a single site. Yes, I should have made that clearer perhaps in my introduction. So thank you, Simon. Um, I'm going to bring Tina in as one of the local members. So Tina, do you want to uh, come in at this stage? Thank you, Chair. Just briefly, so as you've said, I'm a local member in Letchworth, representing Letchworth North, and I'm in attendance today to listen to the views of members here and to offer my support of this proposal. Um, as has been mentioned by Simon, the location um, is ideal really with good access and transport links across the county um, and um, above anything I think for this panel the priority is the environment for pupils and the best thing for our county's children. Thank you very much. Thank you Tina that's good to hear. I think one of the points about um, Briar Patch Lane in Letchworth is that it's not in the town centre of Letchworth. It's it's just outside, um, and and if you like the the adjunct to that is that um, students who will be going to um, the ESC um, won't have the 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 hook that they might have had in terms of the centre of Hitchin, which is where I think it was previously. Um, and the attractions of the town centre. So it is a little bit more, um, a little bit more remote. But as you say, it ha does have lecturers does has have good connections. Mark Watkin. Uh, thank you, Chair. And let me start, if I may, by declaring an interest in so far as I <coughs> pardon me, on the management committee of Chessbrook ESC. And uh, I absolutely sign up to the value the ESCs provide to the education of some of those children who struggle to uh, adapt or to exist happily in large secondary schools. Chessbrook is a shining example of how these children's lives can be turned around and indeed a large number of them outperform their predicted grades that they would have achieved had they stayed in in, in Chessbrook. I talk about Chessbrook because I think it's an exemplar of what I'm absolutely certain North Hearts can become, will become, once it's in a dedicated building, a new building, um, and all those children, all those young people, I should say, uh, coexisting in a, a managed and a well-focused environment. I think all the sustainability arguments are clear. I think asking uh, young people to travel between sites is, an, uh, is just a a recipe for for for, for confusion and delay, um, and uh, to put it quite bluntly, I absolutely support this. I wish it well, um, and as long as the building is absolutely built to the latest sustainability and zero carbon standards, um, there's absolutely no reason why this shouldn't go ahead as a matter of urgency in my mind. Let's give these children the best facilities and let them get to grips with the education they've obviously struggled to achieve in mainstream schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, let me come now to Judy, Judy Billing. Thank you, Chair. Um, my uh, interest to declare is that until very recently, I was a governor of this very ESC um, until I just found that I just didn't have enough time to give it to do it properly. And that's what our ESCs need. They need governors who, who have huge commitment and time to offer everything that the young people need as well as the needs of the staff um, and, the, and the whole structure. 
So I come to this supporting the um, um, the proposition with one tiny caveat, which is that although being in the centre of Hitchin can be a bit of a distraction for some of these young people, obviously, but then it is to the boys at Hitchin Boys School and the girls at Hitchin Girls School. I just have a slight nervousness about um, annexing difficult kids. And I know that's not what we're trying to do, um, but knowing how isolated it can feel down Briar Patch Lane. Um, I just have that slight worry, but I'm still sure it's the right thing to do. Um, and I will absolutely support it because economically running two sites for the North Arts ESC for all these years has been um, difficult and, and, and not helpful, I think, to the problems that they've faced. Um, my major fascination once this decision has been made is about the building currently occupied um, in, in Bancroft in Hitchin, because it was the old courthouse, I believe. Then it was run as a not terribly successful building for youth work. And it's a very difficult building for an ESC as well. So I'm wondering what then happens to this asset. Uh, and I know it's not part of today's debate, but if somebody could point me in the right direction, of finding out what will happen when hopefully as a matter of some urgency um, we do make this new arrangement for the young people who are currently housed there. That would be very helpful for me indeed because I could start uh, looking at all the marvellous community uses we could put that building to for the number of huge number of groups that are currently <laughs> asking for such accommodation, albeit very difficult accommodation. So good idea, get on with it and then what do we do with the building? Thank you. And I hear I hear your bid for the building, Judy. Um, Simon, do you want to? Are you able to make any comment um, with regard, particularly to Judy's um, point about the the future of the building in Hitchin? Um, no, I I can't. I'm afraid. Um, I mean, it will be released to the corporate property portfolio, um, and of course, it's not going to be released for some while because we need to finish the. Um, the new building and then then mm. move the children. Um, but I will ask someone to get in touch with you and let you know if there are no if there's no thinking about the outcome, at least the process that will go through. OK, well, they'll they'll come back to you direct. Judy. Thank you. OK, Jen. Uh, thank you. Um, my experience of ESCs has been with uh, with Chessbrook and Decorum, actually, um, in my years of running an anti-knife crime charity. I did quite a lot of work with both. Um, I think they're the most amazing, um, they give youngsters the most amazing opportunities that they, where they've been, uh, had a, obviously a troubled time until they, they arrived at these places. And I think they're great. So I'm um, listening to what everybody says and, and with uh, Value Tina's uh, comments on it. Um, I would absolutely support this. Yes, I, I think that the, the ESCs do play an absolutely vital role, and it, it's great that um, that they the, the the opportunity here to move into a a new purpose built building. Um, I know that there was a, sc a a school that was significantly rebuilt, as Simon has said, one in in uh, Hatfield, and then some years ago in in Hemel Hempstead and and the the atmosphere that is created in these new schools and these new units is is as much as it possibly can be an atmosphere of calm so that young people can actually learn and 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 uh, get their education together as well so it's such an important thing and uh, very pleased to hear the comments that have been made thus far um i'm not seeing any other hands so um, just to remind you that um, we're being asked to recommend to Cabinet that it authorises a public consultation on the proposal to consolidate. Chairman, forgive uh, me, I can see you from where I'm looking at, Fiona's got her hand up. I don't know if she wants to press her point. For the oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, Mark. I do apologise, Fiona. Sorry. Yes, you did have, and I'm, I, I just closed my eyes at the wrong moment. Sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Um, really, just to say as one of the other local members that totally agree with my colleagues' comments and fully endorse the proposal. 
Thank you very much. And I do apologize for, for not bringing you in. Sorry, sorry, Fiona. Um, so it, it was the um, proposal to consolidate the North Hearts ESC onto Briar Patch Lane. Um, if you are in favor of the uh, proposal to consult, please vote now. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Unanimously agreed. Um, we come to the final item of, of business this morning, which is the outcome of the public consultation on the proposal to permanently enlarge Mandeville Primary School, Sawbridgeworth, by one form of entry to two forms of entry from September 2023. Now, you will have seen a confidential part two item that deals with the specific financial elements of this. Um, if anybody has any questions that they wish to ask specifically about the part two item, um, could you, I don't want to know the questions, uh, but could you indicate now? Otherwise, I would like to think that we might be able to deal with the whole um, item under part one without actually getting into the financial nitty gritty that's contained in the part two paper um, and that will save us having to go into a part two and then come back again. So does anybody have any questions specifically regarding the financial elements in the part two paper that they would want at, to ask at that stage? And I'm seeing shaking of the head. So thank you all very much indeed for that. Um, I'm, I'm going to hand over now to um, Kate Leahy, who will take you through the proposal, and then I'll come back with a, a comment from the local member as well. So, Kate, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, this paper provides panel with an update following the public consultation on the proposal to enlarge Mandeville Primary School in Sawbridgeworth by one form of entry to become a two form entry primary school from September 2023. Uh, and it also provides information about the Section 106 funding to support that scheme. The enlargement of Mandeville has been proposed to, in response to new housing development in Sawbridgeworth, uh, and this housing was identified in the East Hearts District Plan, and the additional capacity at Mandeville was identified in that same plan as the best way to accommodate the additional pupil yield arising, also bringing the school in line with HCC's preference for at least two form entry primary schools. That development's now coming forward, and it is therefore the right time to bring forward the proposal to enlarge the school in, large, in line with that housing. The public consultation on the proposal commenced on the 8th of June and ran for four weeks. 30 responses were received, of which 14 agreed, 11 disagreed, and five were undecided. The governing body of the school wrote in support of the proposal, and that uh, response is attached as Appendix 1. Section five of the report gives a breakdown of the responses received and also summarises the issues raised and provides an officer response to each of these. Section six of the report outlines the financial implications for the scheme and indicates that uh, the scheme costs are expected to be achieved within the section 106 funding available. As an update um, to the panel paper when drafted, I can confirm that the section 106 for the Sawbridge World proposal has now been sealed by HCC but I would just note that due to personal circumstances there's been a delay in the landowner signing and HCC have are yet to receive the final sealed copy um, but I'll be able to provide a further update on that before cabinet. On the basis of the report panel is asked to consider the recommendations set out in section 3 to recommend, a, to recommend to Cabinet that it authorises the publication of statutory notices, agrees the associated capital costs and approve the application for Section 106 funding. Uh, I hope that provides a brief summary for you. 
Thank you very much indeed, Kate. Um, just before I come to Mark Watkin, I should say and draw your attention to the fact that there is a letter of endorsement at Annex 1, I think it is, of the paper uh, from the governing body who are fully supportive of this. And I also um, have pre prior to this meeting heard from the local member Eric Buckmaster, who is also totally supportive of this proposal. Um, and he asked me to uh, make sure that I re reflected his support in the meeting this morning. So that is what I have done. Um, I will now turn for comments um, and I will start. I'm, I'm not quite sure whether it was Paula or Mark who was first, so I'm going to go with Paula this time. I think I think it was Mark. But, oh, go on then, Mark. Go on. No, 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 no. Let Paula no, go. No, 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 no. no. I'm the Paula chair. always you... comes out with wise comments, so I'll be happy to reflect what she said rather than find myself going. Why didn't I say that? So no, I'm happy no, to no, Mark, Mark, take no. the lead on this one. You, you have the bat on. You go now, Mark. I've got to emerge from my cocoon again. Um, I'll get there eventually. Here we go. Right. Um, Yes, it, everything about this is positive to my mind. Uh, there is clearly a significant population growth going on in Sawbridgeworth, um, and uh, I don't know the geography of Sawbridgeworth well enough to be able to have a view that is this the best school? Everything that I hear and read tells me it is. I think the most important point is that the governing body are massively behind this. It's an outstanding school. Uh, a two-form entry school is much more sustainable and can, you know, whether the, 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 the sort of blows of misfortune that sometimes happens in a way the single form entry cannot, um, there is no reason at all that I can see that it should not be progressed with. And I note that it is also being considered as having future capacity expansion needed if the population so requires. So I uh, unreservedly support this recommendation. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. I, I would just add to what you said that from an educational perspective, I think everybody says that a two form of entry school it gives a, can give a better outcome. It depends on the individual circumstances. But as you've rightly said, this is an outstanding school. And one of the clear elements of this, and it comes out from the governing body's letter, is that they will maintain the ethos that they currently have of, of the way that the, the school operates. And that will be extended into the, the larger school. Um, when it is ultimately built or expanded. So that's that's a particularly good thing to hear. And as I, as I say, from an educational point of view, um, it's good to have a two form entry school, um, at which point I will go now to Paula. Um, thank you, Chair. Well, I have to just say as governor of a one form entry school that they also have very clear advantages as well. So um, but going back to this issue, um, I was surprised there were so few responses, and I would only say that's because people are predominantly in favour. Very pleased to hear that the school governing body is for it and that the new building will be carbon neutral. That's a really good point there, I think. And so um, I'm totally in agreement with this. And yes, two form entries, schools do actually provide more facilities um and um more teaching experience etc thank you and and i'm i'm going to uh, just come back to paula and and remind her that i was careful in what i said in terms of one form entry schools in certain depending on the locality that they represent as well um so uh, yes we know that one form entries and indeed one and a half form entries and three form entry schools um, we've got some great schools in our county. Uh, Jan Madden. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I've, I've also been a, a governor of a, a, a single form of entry school um, and also one that was um, by default, if you like, a, a half a form of entry school, although it was officially one form. Um, glad, glad to see that one's filled up now. Um, but I'm a, I'm a big supporter of, of two form of entry schools, N not just I, I, for reasons that everybody else has already given, but also um, I think that they they can often attract uh, teachers who are slightly more sort of specialist teachers that can then be shared across the different 
um, forms of entry, much more so than when there's a single form of entry primary school. Um, so you're going to get some more specialist teaching um, and offer a lot more opportunities for the children. So I'm absolutely in favour of this. Thank you very much indeed. Um, anybody else? No. Within the part two paper, there is no there is no recommendation that we have to bring back to um, the part one meeting. So that that is absolutely fine. Um, no, in that case, I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to read it all out because it's quite long and, and uh, Kate has done a sterling job of reading most of it out for me anyway. So you'll find it. It's at uh, 3.1, the recommendation uh, to cabinet. So if you could vote for against or abstain, please. Thank you very much. That has been unanimously agreed. Can I at this point thank Simon and Kate for their contributions this morning? They've been excellent and we very much appreciate them. Uh, thank you to the officers who have worked on the papers behind the scenes as well. Um, thank you all very much indeed for attending. There is no other part one business. So I now uh, call the meeting to a close. So thank you and have a good rest of the day. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. Thank you.